What begins as a simple recovery mission will send Logan on a world-hopping pirate adventure. All this and more on the pages of Wolverine issues number 14 to 16. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? So then this newest arc actually picks up on a story point that I had honestly forgotten about from the events of the Hellfire Galley. You'll recall that Emma Frost was set to receive an important shipment of Shi'ar Logic Crystal. These are the things that basically keep the Cerebro system up and running. Only the White Queen never got her shipment as some mysterious party stole the Marauder, the Hellfire Trading Company's flagship, set it on fire, and then even threw Emma's brother overboard. Wolverine has been dispatched to deal with this issue, and already things don't start lining up. For one, there's a bunch of dead Russian mercs inside the bowels of the ship, as well as a bunch of acid damage from some unknown place. Wolverine hits the streets in classic neo-noir fashion. He's not the kind of guy who puts clues together. Instead, he just beats up on people who know more more than him until he knows more. We discovered that the Madripoor Harbor Master was paid to look the other way, but he did end up seeing something. You see, after the ship was torched, one person actually did manage to walk away, only they were horribly, horribly burned and now seeking medical attention. That helps Wolverine narrow down where this person might be hiding. But the story this unlucky bastard ends up revealing to Wolverine changes the entire nature of this investigation. You see, as we discover, these Russian smugglers aren't actually all that smart or that good. Someone clearly set them up to steal the logic crystals, but when they were ready to actually pull off the heist, they ended up coming face to face with a massive hulking monster from Erico. A creature so horrible and vile it quite literally bleeds acid like it was a goddamn xenomorph or something. This completely changes the nature of the case. At first, Wolverine and Sage had assumed that the Russians were once again trying to steal logic crystals to help power the sword of Cerebro that Mikhail Rasputin had taken over an X-Force. But now it seems clear that some larger party is playing everyone against each other. With Sage's help, Wolverine is able to riddle out that the giant hulking monster is actually an Erico pirate by the name of Blackmore. Wolverine tracks Blackmore back to his base of operation, which isn't in Madripoor, but actually a place said to be a much worse den of piracy, some place called Truancy Cove. A place where the night's entertainment literally involves jet ski joust matches to the death, which Wolverine is more than happy to get involved in saying that if he can beat Blackmore and put him in the water, then he has to tell him everything he wants to know. Both men actually end up in the drink, and because of that, they decide to share a drink, not of water, but of whiskey this time. Blackmore confirms what Wolverine pretty much already knew, and that is that someone has been playing the pirates and the mutants of Krakoa against each other right now, and that person is someone very familiar to Logan. That would be Solemn. You may remember Solemn from the X of Swords storyline, where he was set up essentially to be Wolverine's polar opposite over on Team Erico. Instead of having adamantium bones, this guy had adamantium skin. Now, as issue 15 begins, we actually learn a lot more about Solemn and his connection to Blackmore. Apparently, Blackmore had actually killed Solemn's parents during a pirate raid. The plan was to sell the amazing young mutant off to be a slave, but he just kept slipping his bonds. It was at that point Blackmore actually came to respect the kid and take him under his wing as a mentor. To everyone's surprise, young Solemn Solemn was pretty damn good at sailing, stealing, screwing, and of course murdering. At times, Blackmore wondered if he had helped create a monster or only helped discover one. Once Solemn had learned everything he needed, he decided to strike out on his own, but before he did, he was sure to steal his mentor's ship and cut off Blackmore's nose for good measure. Oh, he's missing a nose. I just thought he was drawn weird. Okay, that makes way more sense now. From there, Wolverine pretty much knows the rest of the story. Solemn screwed with the wrong people in the Erico royal family and got himself thrown in prison until they needed him to help win the sword competition. Blackmore got his ship back and once the mutants of Erico made the jump over to our world to rejoin the rest of Krakoa, he followed after his most hated foe, Solemn. The two met up in Madripoor and had themselves a massive duel, Solemn ultimately giving his old mentor the slip, but not before leaving behind something very important to Wolverine, the Muramasa sword. Or, should I say, one of the Muramasa swords, there's two now. Naturally, Wolverine can't let this stay in the hands of someone like Blackmore, A, because it can actually hurt him and his healing factor, and B, the sword contains a piece of the soul of Muramasa himself, one of Wolverine's oldest friends. Blackmore says that Wolverine and him should join forces as they both hate Solemn a whole bunch. Naturally, Logan doesn't want to work with someone so transparently evil as Blackmore, but he's ultimately given no choice in the end. Wolverine goes to check on his 
his own Muramasa sword that he's had since the end of the X of Swords storyline, only to his shock and horror, Solemn has actually snuck on in and stole it from him. Which, you know, if ripping off Krakoa and getting people killed wasn't bad enough, now Solemn has literally invaded Wolverine's own inner sanctum and stolen something sacred to him, so you know it's on now. The truly funny thing is, as issue 16 starts, Wolverine doesn't actually have to try that hard to try and find Solemn, as he just sort of tracks him down over at Blob's Bar, and oh, Solemn is as much fun as ever, just the ultimate villainous hedonist. He only cares about fighting, the French arts, and drinking in that order. In fact, he kind of comes on to Wolverine several times during their little exchange. Solemn ultimately tries to placate Wolverine, saying that after stealing those logic crystals, he actually gave them back to the people of Krakoa. He didn't actually have any need for them, he just wanted his enemies to kill each other. Once again, a transparently bad person tries to broker a deal with Logan, saying that if they work together, they can defeat Blackmore, as he's a much bigger threat than Solomon. and his pirate crew will almost certainly want to raid Krakoa next. It's against maybe his better judgment, Wolverine acquiesces and turns what was meant to be a double cross into a triple cross, making it look like he captured Solom so they can spring a trap on Blackmore. But once again, Solom proves that he's really only in this game for himself, and once more just wanted all of his enemies in one place so they could kill each other, and he could take back what he thought to be his. Wolverine ultimately deals with Blackmore, but refuses to let this stuff with Solom go, as he's twice now made him look like an absolute fool. Wolverine picks up Solom's trail and realizes that he's actually been living on the now abandoned part of Erico, just him and a small harem that he's collected. He honestly had a pretty good thing going for a while, no one expected to look for him on that part of the island, let alone the people of Erico that he pissed off. He even stole a couple eggs from the five and made his own cerebro. Hell, by feeding the island of Krakoa his own psychosexual energy, he was even able to get the island high and stop it from turning against him. But the free ride is officially over. Oh, Wolverine's not gonna fight Solomon in this situation. He doesn't have to. Instead, he brought his ace in the hole, Emma Frost, the woman that Solomon stole from in the first place. You see, while Solomon's body may be impenetrable, his mind, and let's face it, other parts of his anatomy are not, and the White Queen is a master of probing those areas, don't you know? Ultimately, Emma Frost decides not to kill Solomon, figuring that he would be an excellent weapon for her ever-growing war chest, assuming he behaves long enough to do so. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to a close, everyone. And so that was Wolverine issues number 14 to 16. I was really glad I got to collect all of these stories and read them in one sitting, because I think it reads much better. I know on social media, Benjamin Percy talked about how proud he was for the creation of Solemn. He liked the idea of Wolverine having a foe who was his polar opposite, honestly a lot closer to Loki in many ways. A guy who, like Wolverine, had a pretty messed up upbringing, is essentially indestructible and immortal, but is just having way more fun with it than Logan ever has. He's a solid foil and a good dichotomy, too. They say near the end of this book, Solemn lives his life keeping people at arm's length because even though his body can't be hurt, his spirit and feelings can be hurt. Wolverine used to live like that, but has actually started changing his ways because of Krakoa. He's part of a family and a community, and by welcoming the X-Men and letting them in, it saved him from a dark fate. Overall, I quite enjoyed this arc. I thought it married a lot of interesting genres. We got a little detective stuff, a little pirate stuff, a little Erico stuff, it's good. I'd feel comfortable giving it all an 8.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watch to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.